th this one I have no explanation for outside of the fact that it's kind of frightening that your brain can do this and then not do it again ever. Uh, I was training my dogs. This was a few years after that. So this would be like 19, that was in 1991. So this would be like 1993, 94. And I took my dogs out on a run and I was up in the mountains and there weren't too many people around. Like it's, it's definitely like going up into the Catskills, you know, if, if there was a trail up into the Catskills and doing a big loop, but there was a section where they had carved a, like a seismic line and there was, there were uh, big power poles along it. And so I was mm -hmm. following that and keep in mind the rest of the run, it's about a three hour round trip. So it was about 40 miles, 50 miles round trip. Uh, I'm kind of at the end of the run. I'm getting ready to turn around and I hit the power line. I'm like, oh good, I can turn this big team around. I had like 14 dogs. I can, it gives me a huge area. I'll go up ahead and I'll turn the team around the side of that hill way up there because there's no trees on it. It's just a big clear cut clearing. I don't know how to, like, to this day, like, so this is like, you know, almost 30 years ago, the, 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 the sense of dread just overcame me. Like I fell into deep water, like you're treading water and it's warm and then you go, you go perpendicular in the water and it's cold beneath and it just shocks the shocks you how deep that cold and you realize how deep the water is and just how bitter cold it is. Mm -hmm. And the breath, the breath just goes, just went out of me. And what, what I experienced is I was no longer in my body for just, I don't know how long, two or three seconds. So like an eternity, but a couple heartbeats. And what I saw is it's hard to describe this, but there's those movies. There's the movies that came out in the seventies and eighties where the heroine it's usually, it was, it was usually a heroine. She could see through the eyes of the killer. Like all of a sudden she would, she would kind of have a seizure and she'd go out of her body and mm -hmm. she'd be trapped and, and she, she couldn't do anything, but she'd be looking through the eyes of this guy as he's going after somebody and she'd be back in her body. And I think they've done that with malignant or something where, so, so the, so the hero, the POV character can see through the eyes of somebody else that's doing stuff. I had that experience. And it was absolutely, it was visceral. It was, I have no explanation. I mean, I'm sure it's a hallucination, but it didn't feel like it. And what happened is when I went out of my body, I was looking at myself from a distance about a quarter mile away, which is about how far I was from the, the hillside. And I had the impression or the hallucination that I was lying just out of sight on that hill at the top of the hill, like behind a a snowbank and, peep, and peeping, you know, looking. And I was watching this guy, me and his dogs get closer and I was going to kill them. There was this, this sense of like, I, I had a rifle or I had, I don't know what I had. I never saw, I, I never looked down and saw anything, but I was laughing because I was like, Oh, they're coming. You know, if they come up here over this hill, I'm going to get them. And it was this, uh, but it wasn't coherent. It wasn't like I could hear, like, like I was having a thought. It was more just the emotion of joy evil glee and then boom i'm back in my body and i almost fell off the back of the sled it was that it was that visceral and that jarring that discombobulating but the part that freaked me out and the reason i stopped the team right there and turned around and, and just i just a big mess but i just did it right there is because right about then all my dogs i had like i said about 14 dogs the leaders didn't do it strangely i think they were sniffing the trail but some of the other dogs were just sort of boredly behind them you know traveling their ears pricked up and a couple of their hackles go up. And then one of them started growling and they were looking up in that direction. They, they oh, smelled wow. something or saw something. Uh, even to this day, my heart just sped up a little bit. I got the goosebumps over my body. And I, so I turned my team around and I got that feeling, uh, you know, where somebody's sighting you with a rifle scope, which I've ha actually had happen. So I know that feeling. And it felt like someone was either glassing me or they had me in their, you know, in, in a telescopic lens and we took off and I was nervous enough that I, I, I usually travel with a lot of weight in training, drag a truck tire, you know, stuff to make the dog stronger. I cut all that off and just, we just hauled ass back. But for, we, we had to go about half a mile before we made a turn and we're out of sight of that hill and the whole way my dogs, some, not all of them, but some of them kept looking back, uh, like over their shoulders and were, you know, doing the accordion instead of being a nice taut line, the team right. kept looking back. So there was, they might've just been picking up on me, you know, my feeling, but it, I didn't stick around to find out. Wow. <laughs> that is extremely creepy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what, what other experiences have you had that are 
I mean, and again, like you, but you felt it was, you know, I'm not saying it was because it could have been a hallucination, but to you, it felt like it was a human presence. Maybe, probably, you know, the thing is, as I preface this section with, right. There's a, I'm, I'm a, a hardcore skeptic. When I was younger, I wasn't skeptic, uh, skeptical at all. You know, uh, if you presented me with some evidence and there was an expert, I, you know, when I was a teenager and stuff, in, into my 20s, I was pretty credulous. But, you know, as I've educated myself and grown older and grayer, I realized that what's that old saying? There's no need to attribute to malice, you know, what's actually just ignorance or stupidity or something. There's no need for me to attribute the irrational to something that's just it's it's just simply that I don't have all the information and my right. own foul and my own fallibility because I have legitimately hallucinated because of um, I was I was drug poisoned once I've had fever and I've also just been uh, hallucinated because of lack of oxygen exhaustion I, I've you know I've had a very colorful life uh, I've been choked out so I understand the different types of hallucinations how they manifest. Right. Uh, and my own my own experiences with them. This one's there's a couple, but this one really stands out as absolutely. It, it was probably just some sort of. I mean, I had a blood clot. I mean, we don't know, but it doesn't matter. What I'm, you know, it doesn't have to have some sort of explanation for me to think it was worth, you know, recalling and as an experience. It really it has stuck with me. Maybe maybe I did transcendentally or astrally project into uh, a bad guy's body um, or into his head, or maybe I was just having an incident. Either way, pretty remarkable. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Additionally, if you have any feedback, please put something in the comments below. And lastly, if you wanna watch the full episode of this clip, you can find it above. Thanks again for watching.